Hi guys, Oliver here from Spitfire Audio. I've been obsessed lately with the score from Volker Bertelmann for the movie All Quiet on the Western Front. It's won an Oscar as well, and rightly so, because it's absolutely mind-blowing. It's got everything from orchestral elements, production, really the surprise element is there with this three-note motive. I really think it's the perfect modern and contemporary score for a film like that. And I've been tasked by Spitfire to write a 30-second trailer and I just couldn't help but be inspired by that score. So this is what I've created and I'm going to break it down in a second. So you can definitely hear the inspiration there with my, uh, I've got a four note motif and it's just distorted and big and epic sounding. And I'm using a bunch of libraries here, which I have to admit I use quite frequently in my compositions inside and outside of Spitfire. For me, this selection of tools here are quite contemporary uh, sounding and just on the zeitgeist really. So Polaris is one of them, our second collaboration with BT, and it's very good in creating this atmosphere. And, and if you listen to Volker's score, uh, he creates these wonderful beds of strings and texture. some of kind of strange sounds coming in and out. If you listen in between the three note motif on the main theme, he has got this like, as if it was a door or something. It's almost sound design within the, within the score. I think we've observed that uh, many times in the recent years, if you think about Hildur Gunnadottir uh, with Chernobyl and things like that. So anyway, Polaris, a uh, very, very cool library to create these textures. I'm a bit of a preset guy, so I just go through it and play until I find something that I really like and then I'd tweak the sounds from there, maybe change the release or the attack or something like that. Um, layering this with a different sound here. Just one thing you've got to be careful when you use sounds like that and textures and when you start layering them, it's not to muddy things up. So for example, here on this one, I just removed the low ends because I prefer the low end from here or actually here, my main motif. So my main motif, I've processed it quite a bit. So if we just turn off all the plugins, it sounds like this. Just thought it had the quality of becoming real big. Throw on some overdrive. It's really making it pop out. Distortion. Then I'm taking the low end off because I heard in Volker's sound that there is really kind of this sup going on that uh, underneath this distorted sound and I'd love to talk to him or know how he how he actually created it but to me it sounded like quite a clean sub punch there and I wanted to leave this space here for just a clear and clean sine wave. I then also removed on the sides only so in the in the Pro-Q filter and I believe uh, or EQ and I believe in other plugins you might have that as well just go on here and it just addresses the sides and I'm taking the low ends out there. It's never really good to have the bass on both sides unless you wish to do so. I actually think on Volker's score he has uh, the bass and the low ends quite wide so you have this kind of stereo effect and really uh, big width of that distorted sounds. Anyway, so then I put everything on and as I said, I combine it with the sine wave. Let's hear, listen to the motif.
Oh. Just really like using this sine wave. It's just a beautiful sound here. Just a logic sampler, uh, a little bit more release, but I don't have it all the time there. So I don't have it like sustain the sound basically. It's just giving a little bit of a oomph and then it disappears together with the other sound. Got quite a harsh attack, so you can even hear a little bit of a click there in the beginning, but that's intentionally. I just wanted to cut through a lot. I've layered this up with some of the strings, uh, some violins here, appassionata strings. For me, the violin here, the other strings as well, but I tend to use the violin here. It's really, really versatile and it just gives a good feel of playing with it, especially the legatos and the performance patches here. Sounds really, really lovely. Epic brass and woods. I tend to go to this originals library for this because the mix and the aggression is really captured in this library. It's just really got a good bite to it. Together with the synth elements here. And then the second time it comes in, I'm just making this a little bit bigger. And for that, I'm using definitely, it's always my go-to strings, Albion 1 octave strings here, long octaves. They're just really, really nice. Then I'm using the Hans Zimmer Celli here. It's just 60 cellos in one room and it just sounds really large and wide. And I thought it just fits this score here. Viola, also Hans Zimmer, doing a bit of a counter movement. The violin on top. Also doing a counter movement to the main melody. And then here, this all together. love using this distorted stuff at the moment. So, and everything else is kind of texture and I want to take you through it. So I've shown you Polaris here, which is really strong with texture. And then for me, these Oliver Arnold's Evos, one of my favorite libraries. Again, I think I say it in, in loads of tutorials, Chamber Grid, Chamber Evolutions and the Chamber Waves. It's just heaven on earth, really. Uh, so these Evos here, Then I'm using Albion Tundra to create another textural element, which are the ricochets created by the string players. And Volker uses it as well in one of his cues, not in the main theme, but in another one. And it's taken, I believe, a little bit from Arvo Part for Artris. That's where it's really famous. And, you know, the beauty of Volker's score is really that it combines loads of different genres, loads of diff different elements from different kinds of composers and styles. And I just really love that. It's a really, really clever and complete kind of score. I'm just going to play you this element here. Just really lovely texture and together with Oliver's evolutions. really like these combinations of strings. So Albion Tundra, Hans Zimmer strings, Oliver Arnold's, and then the Albion one octave basses there. So that's my strings section. Again, I have a few percussive elements and these kind of weird sounds that I pan left and right, they come in and out. And for those I'm using Resonant. Oh, it's just this water kit, it's, it's really nice.
another sound here. Then we have some more metal bits, which, again, it's it's copied from Volker's score. If you listen to the main theme, you hear this kind of stuff right down the middle, and it's really, really impactful and um, grabs you by, by surprise. Another element down here. I've placed some of it uh, what's happening with the picture. Right in the end, I'll play you the trailer as well, so you get a bit of context what's happening with the picture. Pans to left and right. I think it's very effective to open up the width of the composition. Then I'm using Mercury, another great library for more like sound designy and quirky effects. Let's have a listen here. It's almost a soothing effect with all of this stuff, but within the composition, you, you'll you'll see, you'll notice that it does its effects. And then hammers, really, that's my go-to library now for cinematic percussion. I mean, we have Albion One, etc., for great hits like Easter Island hits and stuff like that. But hammers has these amazing loops and warps, and it's produced and curated by Charlie Clauser, and it's really, really epic. Uh, just if you just listen to this loop here. And it really cuts through and I haven't really done anything. I mean, you might be wondering why I'm sending this here with no ad, but it was going to be my side chain because I think initially I had a sine wave base that was just steady and I was just going to have a side chain moving that bass out of the way. But since I have just short hits, I'm actually not using that side chain bus here. So actually I can, I can just mute it. Uh, so again here, this library is very complete for all sorts of cinematic drums. So you have the more traditional orchestral stuff, and then you have like loops and warped loops as well. So this one is really my go-to library if I need epic big drums. So to round it off, mix-wise, I haven't really done that much. I usually mix as I go along, in a sense, if it's not that much of a big orchestral session. I've added some extra reverb here and there using my go-to reverb Pro R, and then I have my uh, setting here, OPW. Uh, it's Large Hall Vienna, I believe, and then I tweaked some of these bits here just to my liking. I usually take out the low ends a little bit, especially if I got loads of low end stuff uh, going to the reverb, um, and then I use a little bit here on one of the one of the percussion bits here. I'm using a UAD Lexicon plate uh, percussion plate, which is my kind of go-to thing for orchestral percussion or cinematic percussion as well, actually. And that's I think that's pretty much it already. Some bits uh, panning left or right, and then of course some of the balancing here. Some elements louder, some some others quiet, and. I think that's it. Not really much else going on. On the mastering side, I use usually a SSL uh, mastering plugin. Here, actually, I can load this up for you if you're curious. So this is kind of my mastering chain. I would then tweak it. So I have saved this uh, preset. It loads all the plugins I like to use. So this is a compressor, just all very gentle. Then sometimes I use a multiband compressor on my final mix there. These settings here take out a little bit on th around 3000 and uh, boost a tiny bit the bass here sometimes i would ignore it if i feel you know it's not like i'm just having this setting and it's every time i'm doing it so i, I use my ears i listen and, and see how it behaves um, but at the time when i saved it, it that was my setting but here i'm adding a little bit of high end again if i feel the mix is already too bright then i won't add this plugin I uh, usually use a little bit of a tape effect here. Not always either, so I always turn it off and see which, which I prefer. And for the ends here, I use a limiter here, which is the L3 Ultra Maximizer, which is also a little bit my go-to uh, plugin for the limiters. So if you have any other suggestions for this, I'm always up for learning as well. If you have any good plugins or tips and tricks, then please leave them in the comment section. All right. 
that's already it from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Go and check out All Quiet on the Western Front. It's really worth for the score alone. If you have questions or comments, again, please leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you, take care and bye-bye.